The immediate question is that the amendment moved by the honourable member for Goldstein be disagreed to, and I call the member for Parks. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I speak today on the Nature Repair Market Bill 2023. I want to state from the outset uh, that I'm not opposed to farmers uh, being compensated uh, for uh, uh, protecting the environment for the benefit of the greater good. Uh, and, but I will want to say I've been watching this debate with some interest, um, and speech after speech after speech is being by people who actually have no concept of what this means in a practical sense. People who live in suburbia, uh, who uh, live in completely concreted and altered parts of the environment. I haven't heard one speech where they're talking about maybe the people they represent changing what they're doing. And one of the great misconceptions, Deputy Speaker, is that the environment in Australia is somehow in this terrible state of decline. I find that deeply offensive to the people of regional Australia. Uh, you know, my own family, my, my brothers and I, were one of the first to uh, experiment with zero-till farming back in the 1970s. Uh, that has been a revolution that has increased soil carbon, uh, that has reduced erosion and made large areas of, uh, of Australia highly productive. And I'll say from the outset, the, the motivation for protecting the environment and, 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 and biodiversity is always around the increase in production. The motivation to look after the, the land that you are in charge of um, is, is production uh, earning income. Because if you have let your land decline, if you haven't looked after the health of your soil, if you haven't planted trees uh, along waterways or shade lines or whatever, then you are uh, not productive, and many of those uh, issues that have been spoken about here may have been relevant in 1920, but they're certainly not relevant today. Uh, and we have seen, uh, you know, some of the speeches, and you know, the, the member for Ringa is a classic example, where she called for the the uh, stopping of lo all growth logging in forests. She lives in a, a electorate that's completely altered. Where do the houses come from in Warringa? There's trees being cut down, there's holes in the ground where the bricks were made, uh, there's been carbon emitted while they made the cement. What sort of a fairy land do these people live in? Then they say, oh, well, we've got what we want, so you folks out there can just stop what you're doing. Not one of these speeches has talked about, with the world's population at 7 billion, heading to 10 billion in a very short time, uh, what they're going to eat. And these uh, credits uh, and agreements that have been signed up to are 25, 100 years. So how do we know what the circumstances will be, be, will be in that time that we lock uh, future generations into poverty uh, because we reduced or stopped the ability to produce food because it suits people who live in urban areas to balance off their emissions, the large corporations to pay farmers to lock up their land and plant trees, uh, what possible benefit is that going to have for future generations of this country? Uh, it's, it's breathtaking uh, to, to see. It's like we're in a vacuum, uh, a debating chamber in a first-year university class where people are signalling their virtue and having all the theories under the sun, but not one practical idea of what it means to people on the ground. And back to you know, my friend from the member for Warringa cutting old growth forests. Fifteen years ago, the Labor government of New South Wales wiped out the timber industry in the Pilliga Forest, a cypress pine timber industry, employing hundreds of people in a forest that was managed. The undergrowth was managed. Since that time, uh, it's burnt in large amounts, in incredibly hot fires, live uh, koalas, uh, you know, sensitive vegetation destroyed by very hot fires because it's just locked up and left. At the moment, we've got an issue with some very sensitive caves in the Pilliga that have great value to the local Gomeroy people, uh, and they're being destroyed by feral goats because there's no management in there looking after these things. In the wetlands and the Guida River, west of Moree, there are thousands of feral pigs because there's no one in there to manage them. So the idea that locking up land 
I'll tell you what the idea is, uh, member for Macquarie. The idea is locking up land, uh, thinking that locking it up is good for the environment, is a falsehood. It's an absolute falsehood. Uh, joining my property at Bingra, there is a stock route that hasn't been used for years. It is now uh, overgrown with cypress, pine, prickly pear, uh, rabbits, feral pigs live in there. Over the fence in my property, uh, where we rotationally graze, we manage the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the level of vegetation. The hardest working people on my farm are the dung beetles. They, uh, they are the unsung heroes of regional Australia. Uh, you know, building up soil carbon. We're going into a dry time. The livestock are still doing well. It's a healthy, active environment. And so, uh, you know, this idea of locking it up, and then the, the next step over is somehow this idea that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have an innate ability to be the overall best land managers. And so, handing over the final say. Uh, in a deal that you might be doing uh, on conserving a part of your land, taking the money, understand all of that, uh, not, not opposed to that, but then having another body coming in to have a final say whether this ticks off or not, uh, the local land council or someone like that, 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 that is not uh, what Australia is all about. We, you know, freehold land is freehold land uh, and the decisions should be made on that by the people that own it, and then uh, uh, who's doing it. Putting, bringing a third party in uh, is is not uh, is not going to help this process. Uh, it'll be just another uh, clip the ticket, uh, another lot of rent seeking going on uh, in, in this uh, in this process. And my concern, if we go forward into uh, the years to come, in a hundred years, uh, you know, if you go back a hundred years. Uh, uh, in, uh, in Australia, uh, and uh, people were farming with, with horses uh, in horse teams. The government was actually, um, with closer settlement, uh, would take blocks of land from people if they actually hadn't cleared it and turned it into a productive use. Soldier settlers, I was at uh, Poyalloway Hall celebrating its 100th birthday on Saturday, uh, and that community was built by closer settlement. Uh, people coming in. Uh, changing the landscape, but a hundred years on, that is still a productive area. It's still a vibrant, living environment uh, that's uh, sequestering carbon, uh, that's doing its bit um, uh, because of the stewardship uh, of the people uh, that are there. And so, uh, we need to be very, very careful uh, with what we do here, and uh, uh, and just understanding that. As I said at the start, I'm not opposed to farmers being compensated uh, because they are using part of their property uh, to, to have conservation. And this was actually a policy started um, under the previous government, and, uh, uh, and, and, and I was supportive of that. But as per usual, because of the uh, current government's lack of any practical understanding outside these four walls of what this stuff means, Going that step further, going that step further, uh, so it makes this uh, unworkable. Uh, it impinges on the rights uh, of uh, individual Australians to produce their own land. But in the bigger picture, understanding that Australia feeds 50 million people outside of Australia, you know, countries uh, uh, over the world that can't produce the protein that we can rely on us. So why on earth are we trying to restrict that ability? Don't the members on that side know that the balance of payment, the, the, country, the, 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 the sectors that got us through the pandemic, agriculture and mining, are all being negatively impacted by this sort of legislation? Um, and, and back to, the, to you know, well, we'll cut all old growth forests. So we'll just buy our timber from a third world country's old growth forest where they don't have any regulations. You know, that's all right. We'll just let them denude uh, their country because they need a balance of payments. No regulations. Comes in on a ship. But boy, we feel good. We've, we've, we've stopped, uh, stopped our timber workers, the, the ones down in Gippsland now that have been told by the Victorian government that they have no future. 
But we feel good about ourselves, don't we? Because now the timber is going to come in from uh, Indonesia or South America or somewhere like that. Uh, the, the environment of the globe. We, we live in a global environment. Uh, and, and, and it's not just uh, signalling our virtue uh, with what we do here. Uh, we, we, we need to understand that if we do things here and start importing things from somewhere else, the environment of the globe actually suffers. We saw that with the cement industry. I had a cement plant way back in, I think, 2008 or 2009, when the first uh, discussion on carbon tax came, I'll digress a bit, uh, Deputy Speaker, please. And just on the strength of that, Cement Australia shut the plant at Candos. It had been there for years and years. So where does the cement now that comes in to build the suburbs that our good friends on the other side live in, where does it come from, do you think? It comes in on a ship through the harbour, probably from Indonesia. No uh, uh, environmental laws there, but we feel good. We've, we've cl closed down an industry in Candos that was there for... Hundred, you know, dozens of years, maybe a hundred years or so. Those people don't have a job, but well, we've, we've done our job here in Australia, haven't we? And and that's what just going this step further. If it had have just stuck to uh, uh, to its original concept, uh, I would have supported uh, this bill because the other thing um, that's related to this is um, is offsets and um, you know. Taking your family to Disneyland for holidays, ticking the green box, so someone locks up a bit of forest somewhere or plants a few trees, uh, helps your conscience, but you still hasn't reduced your own emissions. And what I want to see in here is the debate where everyone in here looks at what they can do, what their electorates can do to reduce emissions and look after the environment. It's all right, well for the member for Warringah to talk about the Tarkine. How far is that from Warringah? It's across the Bass Strait. Seriously, when we start to see uh, policy in here where all of Australians can carry the weight evenly rather than regional Australia, the people who have actually been carrying the uh, economic responsibility of keeping this country solvent just keep trimming away, trimming away uh, the ability to do that, whether we're restricting mining. I mean, we've had the Greens over here wanting to ban coal mining uh, and gas, um, and, and now we're having this uh, attack on, on productive agricultural farming. Um, and, and, a, and, and a bit of this is fine. You know, um, I've got some carbon sinks in my electorate, a bit of it's fine. I don't want the whole of my electorate uh, covered in trees, because not only we're talking about the environment. You take out a productive farm, you plant it to trees, and everyone feels good about themselves. What happens to the people that ran that farm? What happens to the businesses that supplied the drench, the fertiliser, the seed? What happened to the people that shore the sheep on that farm? What happened to the company in town that owned the truck that carted the grain to the terminal? It's all gone. So then what happened to the person in town that was a school teacher with a reduced number of kids, the hairdresser, the coffee shop, the supermarket? And this is an, this is an attack on country Australia. And so while we're all feeling good over there about protecting the environment but not doing one thing ourselves, bit by bit you're strangling regional Australia uh, to a point where it's no longer viable. Uh, Deputy Speaker, I'm opposed to this view, bill. I'm sorry that I have to be because in its original form as put up last uh, government it would have been a positive one. Now uh, I'm afraid to say uh, it. Uh, it is potentially dangerous uh, uh, in the longer term for this country and I no longer will support it. Authorised by Mark Colton, National Party of Australia, Dubbo.